What's cracking, yo? Welcome back to Boo TV. Appreciate you for stopping in. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell, stay notified, and let's get into the topic for today. So, after the Lakers beat the Golden State Warriors to take a commanding 3-1 lead in the series, a lot of people started coming out saying that this series is over, this series is over, yada, yada, yada. Golden State doesn't have a pulse. Well, they're definitely on life support. But this series is over, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And while it did not look very bright for the Golden State Warriors, and I'm a Laker fan, I never felt like this series is over, this series is done with. Because by watching the game, I saw that two... At least two of those games could have went either way. Golden State had their chances to win. And the reasons why they lost were reasons that were fixable and correctable to a degree. Right. Had they just, you know, one or two plays done differently could have granted Golden State Warriors a victory. So that's why I didn't look at it like that. I knew just as easily as the Lakers could win two out of three games or three out of four games, I feel like the Warriors could win three out of four games or three games, rather. Three games. <laughs> they have to win every game from here on out. So I, f I felt like the Lakers could, I felt like the Golden State Warriors could win three straight games. Uh, and if I remember correctly, the 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 Lakers had a blowout victory, the Warriors had a blowout victory, and then this game that just happened, where the Golden State Warriors beat the Lakers one twenty one one hundred six, was Golden State's other blowout victory. But you know how the cli the cliche going the cliche saying goes, you know you hear it every time a team goes down three one in a series, one game at a time. One game at a time. One game at a time. And while that sounds cliche, it's like, of course they're going to say that. It is the correct logic and the right way to look at that scenario. Don't think about game six. Don't think about game seven. Don't think about, oh, man, we got to win three straight games against this Laker team who has so much more size over us. And, oh, my God, they have LeBron James. And, oh, you never know. You're going to at least get one good Anthony Davis performance out of these three games so we don't have a chance no one game at a time and like I said the Warriors could easily have been up 3-2 in this series had the ball bounced a different way or had Steve Kerr and the Warriors well Steve Kerr got out coached two of those games I do believe I think there was there was some poor Coaching decisions by Steve Kerr, especially conveying information to his to his players on what to do in certain scenarios. And I think players should also know time score scenario where they would have handled situations differently that were pivotal moments of the game. But like I said, even when they went down 3-1, I never said, I was like, no, no I, Golden State can very well come back from a 3-1 series deficit and win based off what I've seen if they just work or execute execute a little bit better in certain scenarios they can do this and i know golden you know i heard i heard an analyst say you know when, when they were making all those careless turnovers oh this is so un uncharacteristic of golden state warriors it's like no it's not as long as i have been watching the golden state warriors for years that is very characteristic of the golden state warriors they are constantly doing silly nilly willy willy nilly snilly silly turnovers all the time all the time things that can be mitigated to a degree i mean you know it, you are who you are i get it but to a degree focus a little bit harder clean up your mistakes you'll be in a good position to win or a better position to win than what you were but yeah so here we are now golden state warriors went at home uh they actually probably the best warriors game i've seen them play um probably this this playoff series like collectively if my memory serves me right i mean i'm trying to think of that 
the Sacramento series, but uh, the Lakers are much stiffer comp- competition for the Warriors than the, than the Sacramento Kings. And what I've seen from them today, I have to say, this was all together collectively um, a, a, one of the better Golden State Warriors performances I've seen in this playoff series. Uh, Steph Curry, honestly, th- 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 it could have been more of a blowout. Honestly, it could have been a blowout earlier. Steph Curry wasn't hitting from three point yet. Yeah, yeah, Steph shot 12 for 24 overall, but he was 3 for 11 from three point land. Clay Thompson still is struggling. Uh, 3 for 12 from field goal range, 2 for 6 from three point land. Uh, what's that boy name? Um, Poole, Jordan Poole has been taking a lot of criticism, rightfully so, the last couple games, and we saw his role being diminished and he wasn't getting more minutes. But I was not one of these people saying, there are people saying, uh, Jordan Poole's un- unplayable. He's unplayable. You can't play him anymore. And I was like, no, nope, no, nope, listen. Whatever's going on is going on. Maybe he's in his own way a little bit. Maybe he has something to do with the Lakers' defense. I don't know. But from what I've seen from Jordan Poole from the long haul of the season is, A, do I think he's played up to his potential in the bag that they gave him? Not quite. But I've, I know Jordan Poole's skill level and what he can bring to the team and I personally thought not playing him, for whatever reason, coach's decision might not be the best situation. The, the Warriors need as much help as they can get, especially from those young guns, a guy that has tapped in full of energy. Whether he's missing or not, he can continue to put pressure on the Lakers' defense with his, with his speed, his youth, athleticism, and create havoc in the paint. If his jumper is going, then you know you're gonna have a pretty decent Jordan Poole game. But he did what he needed to do this game. He came in, he gave him energy. You know, it wasn't the best shooting performance in the world. Five for fourteen for Jordan Poole, one for six from three point land. But his eleven points were big, and I felt like he hit some really big shots in key moments of the game. Not necessarily you know fourth quarter moments, but key moments of the game where I felt like the Golden State Warriors really needed a bucket or some energy, and I thought Jordan Poole gave them exactly that. So good, a good solid 23 minutes for Jordan Poole. And that's the eye test, man. See, looking at the box score, you say, well, Jordan Poole, man, one for six from three-point land, five for 14. Uh, minus one, to plus minus. Nope, I watched the game. They needed every one of those Jordan Poole moments, and he, he played a pretty good game. He played a good game. I'll give him that. All right. Draymond Green. This was the best Draymond Green game. And I can't stand Draymond Green. I'll tell you right now. I used to be a Draymond Green fan. I used to like Draymond before he became uh, affiliated with Clutch Sports. And he became a bronze sexual. And now the stuff that comes out of his mouth, I'm just like, Draymond, what? 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 Like, I like the competitive fervor that Draymond Green had when he'd go up against LeBron James. Because so many players fear LeBron and respect him. And he has a lot of a lot of fans that are still playing in the league, and people don't come at him like they should because of how they 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 view him with their puppy dog eyes and stars. And Draymond Green was one of those guys that just always was ready to. Obviously, he's not on LeBron James's level, but based on Draymond's skill level, he would. It was a badge of honor to just play great defense and try to stop LeBron and make life very difficult for LeBron and have no back down in him. And while he still plays, it ain't the same. It ain't the same, man. He 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 has that that reverence for LeBron James and and part of me feels like, man, are you sabotaging some of these games? <laughs> I ain't going there. But LeBron uh Draymond Green had this, I cannot remember last time I seen Draymond Green play this well. From the from the jump, Draymond had 20 points, 10 rebounds, 4 assists, 2 steals, 1 block. 5 turnovers, but I don't care about that. The dude played phenomenal. All right, 7 for 11 from the field, 1 for 2 from 3-point land. Nailed all 5 of his 3-pointers. More importantly than just those stats was Draymond Green's energy. Draymond's energy on both ends of the floor, making deflections, making blocks, making life difficult for players, um, being a little gnat out there. Then offensively, just what we've seen Draymond do so much in this Warriors offense, just orchestrating it between him and Steph Curry, but putting players where they need to be, directing players where they need to be to set up pivotal plays and important plays 
and easy buckets for people. Draymond was the player of the game, in my opinion. Hands down, Draymond Green was the player of the game. I can't remember. I'm not a hardcore Warriors fan, so I don't watch every Warriors game. But given the magnitude of the situation, you know, playoff game, the last time I remember Draymond Green playing this well from the eye test, the feeling test, the box score, was probably game seven of the 2016 NBA Finals where the Warriors ended up losing to the Cleveland Cavaliers. But the feeling I got from Draymond today was the feeling I got from Draymond back in that 2016 game seven. Like, so hats off to Draymond. That He was the reason. The reason. Exceptional. And if the Golden State Warriors want to pull this off, if the Golden State Warriors want to go in to Crypto Arena with their backs against the wall and stand a chance, they are going to need Draymond Green to pull this off again. They are going to need Steph Curry to have another great game, but Steph Curry's going to have to do better from 3 for 11 from three-point range. Steph's going to need to be hitting his three-pointers. Klay Thompson is going to need to pull his head out of his ass on offense. He's pretty solid defensively. But he's going to have to pull his head out of his ass on offense and start making some of these buckets, making more of these buckets. All right? Kevion Loney, just keep doing what you're doing. Oh, I'm over here farting. Ugh. Jordan Poole, I need you to play like you did this game. And if you can play even better, do it. Gary Payton Jr. actually had a great game. He had the best plus minus for the team. And whatever lineups he was in seemed to work very well. They seemed to thrive in the lineups that Gary Payton Jr. was in. Had 13 points. But that is what the Golden State Warriors are going to need. And Andrew Wiggins. After Draymond Green, Andrew Wiggins was the next best player on the Golden State Warriors that tonight. Wiggins was extremely efficient. Wiggins hit so many key buckets. Wiggins was just not settling for jump shots. Wiggins was getting into the paint, throwing up floaters, crashing the boards, doing putback dunks, getting to the lane, spinning on people. With He was hitting this, this nice finger roll, scoop shot, layup, floaters all game long. Was not scared to get in the paint. Yeah, Wiggins had 25 points. 10 for 18 shooting, 2 for 5 from three-point land. Seven big rebounds, five assists, and still on the block and played some stellar defensive as well. So they, they, they're going to, the Warriors going to have to duplicate, more or less duplicate this performance and, and actually shoot better from three-point land. They were 13 from 35, 37%. Guess it's not super horrendous, but they're, they're going to need to be, they're going to need to do better than that in Staples. They're going to need to do better than that. They, they, they're they going to have to probably hit a close to a 40% clip, maybe better from three-point land. Curry and Klay Thompson especially. You guys are the most lethal shooters in the league and on this team, and they're going to need to do that to be able to pull this series off. I'm not counting Golden State out, man. I think they can definitely win in Staples. And if this goes to a game seven, Good night. I don't think the Lakers have a chance in Oracle in a game seven. I don't. Anything's possible, but like I said, that that's how I feel about that situation. As far as the Lakers go, it would behoove the Lakers to come out in, in, in Crypto Arena and put these guys to bed. Put the kids to bed. Do not play games. Los Angeles Lakers, if you guys come out here flat or even competitively and don't manage to pull out the victory and you go to game seven, you are asking for a death wish. You absolutely are. They need to come out and put the kids to bed early. I mean, they need to get out to a 25-point halftime lead and don't let off on the gas. Put the, Do not let these guys linger around. Do not keep this game close. Put them to bed early. I expect the Lakers role players to play better at home than on the road. I expect the Lakers to get more calls at home. I expect the Lakers to be more aggressive in the paint and on the boards at home. 
But that's what they're going to have to do to be able to pull this one off. Anthony Davis is going to have to have one of his non-disappearing act performances. Anthony Davis is going to have to step up and play. Now, we don't know the stat, the status of Anthony Davis after he got wheeled, carted off in a wheelchair, rolled off in a wheelchair after he got hit in the head. Come on, man. What are we talking about? I heard that. I was like, are you serious, man? Come on, man. I expect Anthony Davis to play. Uh, I don't know if he had a concussion. Because if he goes into concussion protocols, that's pretty much it. He's definitely going to miss game six. And possibly game seven. Depending on the the, the reevaluation and the concussion protocols. So, Anthony Davis. If Anthony Davis doesn't play, Lakers don't have a shot. But if AD plays, that's what they're going to need from AD. Now, D'Angelo Russell is going to have to play solid. I'm, I need at least 15 plus points from D'Lo. And some timely shots. He's been hitting timely shots with regularity this series. Uh, the, the series. Austin Reeves, we know what Austin Reeves is capable of. Hill, Billy, Kobe. But he, a, a, a Reeves is going to have to give me 15 to 20 points. And continue to put pressure on the Golden State Warriors defense. Make those guys work on the defense of them. Whoever you're matched up with. Poole, Clay, Curry, whatever the situation is. Rui's been more or less solid in 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 and the attempts that he takes and in his limited minutes at times. I'm not worried about Rui. Rui's going to be Rui. But LeBron James, it all comes down to LeBron James. Now, we see how LeBron James has been playing this playoffs. He's definitely been off the ball more. I really like how LeBron has been playing. This is what I've been wanting from LeBron all season long. Even when Russ was on the floor, I was like, Bron, just come off the ball more. Put some more on his responsibility on these other players. Let them create. Let them do other things. You do not have to create everything and do everything all the time. You don't have to be the system, LeBron. And you can still be a maestro without being so ball dominant. And I, for the first time in his career, really, I've seen LeBron play this kind of way. And I like it. And I think overall the team has benefited from it. But... Here's what's going to happen from LeBron James. I'm calling it right here, right now. I don't know if it's going to happen in game six. And if it doesn't happen in game six, it's absolutely going to happen in game seven. This is regardless to if Anthony Davis plays or not. So like I said, possibly in game six, I expect LeBron James to be more like the LeBron James we've seen in the past, especially in pivotal games. I expect LeBron James to be extremely aggressive. I expect LeBron James to really put his handprints on this game. I expect LeBron James to take the Golden State Warriors by the neck and just ring them out. I expect LeBron James not to be settling for a bunch of three-pointers and a bunch of jump shots, long-distance jump shots. I expect LeBron James to put his head down and go to the basket every single time. And put pressure on them boys. Especially in Oracle. I mean, especially in Crypto. LeBron is going to get the foul calls. I expect him to put pressure on that defense in the paint. And just like like a bull in a china shop. Just head down, drive into the lane. And try to stop me. I totally expect that. I expect LeBron James to dominate. To dominate. Yes, even in year 20 is capable of that. Especially with this Warriors small ball lineup. Nobody can really check this guy. Especially driving to the paint. And the Warriors have done an admirable job. You know, after he gets into the paint. Getting deflections without fouling him. But I don't know how much longer that's going to hold up for him. It's only a matter of time before LeBron James has one of these performances. And he's been kind of just laying in the chalks lately. But like I said, if it doesn't happen game six. You better bet your goddamn last dollar. That game seven. LeBron James is going to head down, bull in the china shop, going to the paint every single time, not settling for jumpers and long threes. And and if LeBron James, he'll usually shoot an early three, early one. And if he feels good, he'll keep shooting them. And and if he's making his jump shots, if, he's, if his three-pointer is going down, then you're out of luck. You're out of luck. Good luck. Good luck if LeBron's jumper's on. But like I said, I'm calling it right here. I'm calling it right here. Boo TV. Do not expect this style of play that we've seen from LeBron to continue as the series gets deeper. If not game six, if he doesn't exert himself in game six and make his presence felt 
and put a stranglehold on the game and dominate the paint and the driving lanes. If he doesn't do a game six, he is sure as hell going to do a game seven. Game seven. But you can expect it from a, either in game six or game seven. You can expect it. I promise you. That's my opinion on the series so far. Happy to be back so I can do some more content on these playoffs. It's been uh, interesting so far. My my early season predictions are pretty much thrown out the window with the Milwaukee Bucks being eliminated um, and the and the Clippers being eliminated. So I don't really have much of a say in it anymore. I've been my my my, my predictions have been wrong as far as who the, the finalists are going to be in the championship series. But it is what it is. I'm not I'm not I'm not gonna reevaluate it much at this point. I'll take my L. <laughs> anyway, I appreciate you guys. Let me know what you think about it. What is your opinion on the series? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Or you know, just generally generally, how do you see it moving forward? What are your predictions? Like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell, stay notified. I'll catch you on the next one. We out, baby.